This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, <coughs> welcome everyone. Parshas Bereshis. So there's a very quick turnaround. You know, as they say, Nod Seifai Letchilasai. The end of the Torah hooks right back into the beginning. As soon as you finish the Zeis Habracha, as we said, you have to start Bereshis right away. You know, we took note of the fact, and there's the observation of the stipler, that in the Chasen Torah, you call up the Chasen Torah, you say, Amoid, Amoid, Amoid. But Chasen Bereshis, you say, Maher, Amoid, Amoid. You know? Because uh, as soon as you finish V'zoi Sabracha, you have to immediately start Bereshis. There's no, it's a big Sakana. The moment you kick back and you say, I already finished, I'm going to relax a little bit, I'm going to take in my accomplishments, it's a very big danger. So Baruch Hashem, we're here for another year. Tav Shem Pei, the Rav Hashem Shigav HaSiyata Deshmaya. Laharois Oisano Mitairasai Neflais. Okay, so we're going to begin with a very interesting subject. Uh, again, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of time between the end of Yom Tov and now, but uh, Baruch Hashem, I think... Let's remind everyone to turn off their phones. <laughs> and um, so there wasn't a lot of time, uh, a lot of time between the end of um, Yom Tov and now, but the Gemara tells us from Sechta Megillah, about a chazan, that there are certain things that a chazan may say that not only are we not happy with it, but we have to, you know, silence him. We have to uh, make him be quiet. Meshaskin oisai. And one of those things, the Gemara says in Megillah, on Daf Chafhei, the Gemara says, it's a Mishnah, Al Kan Sipar Yagiu Rachamecha. On the bird's nest, your mercy reaches. If somebody says that, Meshaskin oisai. We silence him. If somebody says, Rebani Shalalam, you're so merciful on the bird. And the evidence by the fact that if you need to take an egg, you can't just take the egg. You have to send away the mother, and then you take the, uh, then you could take the egg. So we say, if somebody says, Rebani Shalalam, your mercy even reaches the bird's nest, we have to silence such a person. It's an inappropriate verbiage. It's an inappropriate expression. So the Gemara discusses what's wrong with saying Al Kan Sipar Yagiyo Rachamecha. This is Gemara Megillah, it's also Gemara Brachos. Says the Gemara Al Kan Sipar Yagiyo Rachamecha, my taima, what's the reason we silence the person? And the Gemara brings the Machlaikis, Pligiba, Tre Amoroi, Bimarava. Is the Machlaikis, Tu Amoroim in Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Yossi Bar Avin, Rabbi Yossi Bar Zvida. I'm going to say the second reason first. Because what, the, what it's doing is, it's turning the mitzvahs into God's mercy on creation. It's making a mitzvah social welfare, tikkun olam, or some kind of liberal idea that the Rebbe Hashem gave us mitzvahs because the Hashem is merciful on the birds or on creation. And it's not true. Or oh, the mitzvahs are not acts of God's mercy. The mitzvahs are absolute realities. The mitzvahs are the Dvar Hashem. They're not, they're not rachamim, they're gzerais. But the first answer, and that's going to be the subject of tonight's shir, and that is, Chad Omar, Mibnei Shematil Kina B'ma You're instilling jealousy in creation. What does that mean, you're instilling jealousy in creation? Because if you're going to say that the Rebbe Hashem is merciful on the birds, so that means Rebbe Hashem is merciful on the birds, he's not merciful on the dogs, and not on the cats, and not on the fish. And it's going to create an imbalance in creation, as if God is playing favorites. God likes, you know, owls and woodpeckers, but he doesn't like polar bears. It's not right, then the polar bears are going to get jealous, and the alligators are going to get jealous, and, uh, you know, and uh, the... Uh, the birds are going to say, look, you know, we, uh, we owls, we uh, whatever, we eagles, we're better than you. God loves us more. He's more interested in us. He's more protective of us. So you're causing an imbalance in creation. The Lashon of the Gemara is, you're matil kina b'masabaratius. And therefore, if somebody dear says that God's mercy reaches the, the nest of the bird, we silence such a person. Look at Rashi. Rashi says, loimar al ha'oifos to say that God is merciful on the birds, but on the animals and the wild animals, He's not merciful. So this seems to be an important principle, that one cannot suggest that there's any kind of imbalance or any kind of uh, off-kilter in creation. God doesn't play favorites. He doesn't like birds better than fish. He doesn't like fish better than birds. And as we're going to see, this is a recurring theme in all of Master Baratius. 
that every single thing the Rebbe Hashem created, he was super conscious and careful to make sure that all of creation is created equal. So let's give another example. God said, let us make man. So this is one of the most difficult psukim in the whole Torah. This is one of the psukim that they changed for Tamay HaMelech. Who's God talking to? It suggests that there's Who's God talking to when He says, let us make man? It says Rashi, An God ain't talking to anybody. But we learn God's humility. Why? People want to know, you know, every, there's something called reverse psychology. This is the first example of reverse psychology in the Chumash. Man is created in the image of the angels. The angels are going to be jealous of man. God was afraid the angels would be jealous of man because the man looks like angels. Therefore the Rebbe Hashem consulted the angels so that the angels shouldn't be jealous of man. Now, so let's think about that. First of all, we learn a very important lesson from here. That if you're afraid, it's just it's a type of good advice. If you're afraid someone's jealous of you, if you're scared, if you're sensitive that perhaps somebody's jealous, the way to sort of placate that person, the way to alleviate the jealousy, is you go over to them and you ask them advice. You consult with them, because what you're doing is you're putting yourself under them. So now they won't be jealous of you anymore. They're jealous of you because they think that you're above them. But So when you go ask Eitzah from them, you're placing yourself beneath them, it sort of placates them and it removes their jealousy. It's a story you learn from Rashi. So why would the angels be jealous of man? Because man is created in the image of the Malachim. So therefore the Rebbe Hashem was afraid the angels would be jealous of man, so God consulted the angels. And Rashi brings various examples that the Rebbe Hashem often consults with the angels. For example, when Hashem judges kings, Hashem consults with the angels. Like we find by Achav, that Micha told Achav that Hashem is uh, consulting with the angels on the right side and the angels on the left side. So too, says uh, Rashi, Afkan at the end of Rashi, the Pamalya Shaloi not al Rishos. He asked Rishos from his retinue. Omar Lohem, listen to the reverse psychology. It's Mamash reverse psychology. God was afraid the angels would be jealous of man. So what argument did the Rebbe Shalom use to the Malachim why you should create man? He said, Malachim, I have to create man. If I don't create man, the upper worlds, the lower worlds will be jealous of the upper worlds. Because the lower worlds will say that upstairs there, there are entities that are in your image and downstairs there are no entities in your image. <laughs> upstairs there are, there are entities in my image. <laughs> if there are no, nothing in my likeness downstairs, <laughs> there's going to be jealousy in creation. So listen to, the, there's like a double psychology going on here. Hashem knew that the angels would be jealous of man. That the angels would say, what's going on over here? Here there's another creation that looks like us. So Rav Hashem knew the Malachim would be jealous of man. So what did Rav Hashem do? He told the Malachim, I have to make man, because if I don't make man, then the lower worlds are going to be jealous of the upper worlds. So Hashem used the jealousy card to convince the angels to create man, so that the angels wouldn't be jealous. <laughs> yeah. When Moshe Rabbeinu went to get the Torah, didn't he say, Kilom Yishpachem Kina? That was his defense, no? If I'm not mistaken, on that Gemara, there's a little uh, Gilyan Hashas, there's a comment from Rabbi Kivegar. Rabbi Kivegar just says, I ain't in that Medrash. What he, but but what, we don't know what Rabbi Kivegar means to ask. He means to ask your question. He means to ask, how could the Gemara, how could Moshe Rabbeinu say to Malachim, Klum yesh kinna b'neichem? So the Rav Kivegar says, look, look in uh, the Chazal, that we see Malachim do have jealousy. So then he didn't have any defense. Yeah, that's Rav Kivegar's kasha. Yeah, that's a, that's a gillion hashas. He doesn't say the kasha, but he's metzayin. In other words, the Gemara says, Klum yesh kinna b'neichem. But when, the, when Hashem wanted to give, the Rebbe Kiva asked from the fact that when Hashem wanted to give us the Torah, the Malachim were jealous. They said, leave it here. So we see the Malachim maybe do have jealousy. This is a kasha. That's a good kasha. 
Okay, but the bottom line is, here again we see that the Rebbe Hashem was so careful that the angels should not be jealous of man, and he was able to explain to the Malachim why we have to create man, because otherwise the downstairs will be jealous of the upstairs. Okay, apparently jealousy was a very real part of creation. Here it is. What day are we on anyway? We're in the sixth day of the creation. What are we afraid of? We're, the Rebbe Shalom says, um, Angels, I have to create man. Why do I have to create man? Because the Tachtoinim will be jealous of the Elyonim. But if there's no man, who's going to be jealous of the Elyonim? The rocks are going to be jealous. The trees are going to be jealous. The fish are going to be jealous. You see, Kina is not only part of the makeup of man, Kina is a reality of existence. Rocks are jealous. Sticks are jealous. What? Even the Rebbe Shalom is jealous. They're, they're, we, we learn from here, Kina is a part of the fabric of the Bria. And the Rebbe Shalom is so careful to avoid this Kina, that if somebody says, Al Kansipar Yagi Rachamecha, we silence the person. The Rebbe Shalom has to persuade the Malachim to create man, but the Rebbe Shalom doesn't want the Malachim to be jealous, but he's able to convince them to create man, because otherwise the downstairs will be up, uh, jealous of the upstairs. Now listen to this. So God creates man. And what does He make man out of? Man is a composite. In other words, we're a big mess. You know, people want to know, why am I so conflicted? That's, that's, who, that's who we are. We're very conflicted. We're, very, we're tormented. Man is a big mess. Unless you could figure out how you could reconcile the dirt and the soul, it's, well, a, a human being is a mess. Because you have things pulling you down, and you have things pulling you up. The whole day... You have a neshama that says, there's nothing in this world that gives me even an ounce of enjoyment. And you have a body that says, I don't want to be in shul, I don't want to learn. So wherever, it's a no, it's a no-win situation. If you're p- pursuing ruchnias, the body isn't happy. If you're pursuing gashmias, the neshama is not happy. So al yidei the Torah HaKadoshah, we're able to fuse together the guf and the neshama in dirachecha darche noyam where we have a certain equilibrium, we have a certain menuchas hanefesh, but otherwise the natural state of man is in tug of war. That's, in other words, if a person doesn't figure out how to navigate this world, a person's in turmoil. That's the natural state of a human being. Look at number five. That's right. Yeah. But here... More ish in us, we have a problem. Yeah. But here we see the, the primary ingredients of man. God created man out of dirt. So next time somebody tells you, pal, you're a piece of dirt, say, you're right, amoida, enachanami. That's, that's what we're created at. Vayipach biap of nishmas chayim. But we're, we're, the word of the Ramami Pano says that Adam, the, the Pashtus in the word Adam means we come from the Adama, we come from the earth. But it also has another meaning. It has a meaning of Adam el Elyon. I'm similar to the Rebbe Nishalem. So the word Adam has a duality to it. On the one hand, it means we're a piece that we're made out of the earth. On the other hand, it means that we could be similar to the Rebbe Nishalem. But look at this Rashi. Rashi says that when the Rebbe Nishalem created man, Asoy min ho'el yoinim uminat achtoinim. He made man out of the upper world, the neshama, uminat achtoinim, and out of the lower worlds, the dirt. Guf min ha-tachtoinim, u neshama min ho'yoinim. Why? Lefi shabayoyim rishoyim nivru shamayim v'aretz. On day one, what was created? Heaven and earth. So let's keep a tally, okay? Heaven and earth, remember, everybody's jealous. This is a very jealous world. So heaven has one point, you know, the, the heaven, and earth has another point, okay? Tied. Right now in the boxing match between heaven and earth, it's a tie. Ah, says Rashi, Besheni bara rakia l'elyonim. On day two, God created the firmament. Okay, so it's two to one. Heaven is up two to one. Ah, oh, but in the bottom of the second inning, b'shlishi teira yabasho tachtoinim. On the third day, the dry land appeared. It's a tie game. Then Rashi's bravi bara ma'iras l'elyonim. On the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon. Three to two. So I'm going to tell you a kasha stamakash. I don't have a good answer to this. How is the sun and the moon for the Elyonim? Who exactly upstairs is benefiting from the sun and the moon? Sun and the moon is for, for me and you. You know, we, we see with the sun, all our food comes from the sun. What does it mean that the Ma'oirois are for the Elyonim? 
originally. I mean, the original light, and then the Rebbe Hashem. But now, so, that, so now we're ahead. Yeah? But Chamishi, it's tie game again. Yishut Surah Mayim Latachtoinim. They're fish. So it's, it's uh, three to three. Now, on the sixth day, God has to create man. If he creates man, it's going to be four to three downstairs. If upstairs, if, if God creates man from the Tachtonim, it's four to three downstairs. So Yvonne Shalom says, I have a wonderful idea. I'm going to create man from the Adama and from the Shamayim. This way, why? The Imlav, Yesh, Kina, Bamasa, Bereshis. Because if I don't create man out of both, it's going to be a tie, it's going to be a... Jealousy is going to be a rivalry. It's going to be too competitive. Therefore, the Rebbe has to keep an even score. So I'll tell you a kasha. I don't have a good answer to this kasha either. It's not my kasha. It's the kasha of the hafla. The hafla asks, it's not a tie game. Let's think about it. Day one, Shemaim Baaretz. Tie. Day two, Rakia. Day three, Aretz. Day four, Ma'orais. Day five, Fish. Day six, Man from both. You forgot about something. What's the beginning of day six? The beginning of day six, God created the animals. The animals are just minat tachtoinim. So it's, uh, it's yesh kinnab, amas abaracious. So the hafla, you could take a look on your own, tries to address this question number 14, that Rashi seems to have ignored <coughs> the fact that on day six, we bunch them created the animals, and the animals are only minat tachtoinim. Says the Maral, the Maral comments on Rashi, that we learn from here and, and we observe from here an amazing phenomenon, and a very important idea that the world must be equal. All facets of the world must be created equal. The El Yoinim and the Tachtoinim have to be shakal. Says the Maral, look in the Medrash. The Medrash says, Beresh is Barlikim Eis HaShamayim. First the Shamayim first. And then in Perak Beis, Pasik Dalet, Eila told us the Shamayim, Va'aretz bi Baram. Shamayim first. And then, Pasuk Dalid, we have, Biyoyim Biroy Asoy Sashem Wikim Eretz V'Shamayim, Eretz first. Why sometimes Shamayim first? Why sometimes Eretz first? Because otherwise it's going to be a rivalry. You know, it's like you serve pizza at a shear. Okay, so people are civil enough that if Ruvain gets a little bit of a bigger slice, Shimon will still enjoy his slice. But try bringing home a pie of pizza to kids. Right? All of a sudden they take out you know, molecular microscopes to measure whether the slice that Ruvain got is, is as big as the slice that Shimon got. Why? Yesh kin of a pizza. That's the way the world is. That lo- look how even little kids, they don't know anything yet. They can't even read the Aleph base. But they know that if their sibling got a bigger slice of pizza, it's mamesh achorben. It's, it's terrible. Try pouring soda for two kids. All of a sudden, they take out, you know, molecular binoculars to see who got more soda. So the Rebbe created the world the same way. Everyone's keeping score in the Bria. Everyone's keeping score. Oh, Shemayim came first! Okay, so Eretz has to come first in the next Pasuk. Says the Maral, everything in the Bria has to be Mamish Shakal. There can't be any Kinnabamas Abaracious. It's interesting. Look at number 10 for a moment. There's a Medrash. The Medrash Rabbah comments that sometimes Shamayim comes before Aretz, sometimes Aretz comes before Shamayim, to teach Sheshkulenheim. But what's interesting is, the Medrash compares it to the fact that usually Avraham comes before Yitzchak, comes before Yaakov, but one time Yaakov comes before Yitzchak. The Zacharti is Brisi Yaakov. Why? So, so it says the Medrash, to teach Sheshkulenheim. Always Moshe comes before Aaron, but one time Aaron comes before Moshe. Why? Shkulenheim. And the Medrash brings many examples of this. For it usually says Tyrin and then Bnei Yoyna. And one time it says Bnei Yoyna before Tar. Why? They're equal. And it always says, who's, who's more important, your father or your mother? So it says, but it says, Why? They're equal. They're equal. There's a Sefer, I found a Sefer, Nes Yehuda. Interesting Sefer. He says, even in one Pasuk, Perak Beis, Pasuk Dalet, if you look back at number 9, in the same Pasuk, Eile Toda Shamayim Varetz Bihibaram, Biyoy Masoy Hashem Alekim Eretz V'Shamayim, in the same Pasuk, first Shamayim Varetz and then Eretz V'Shamayim. <laughs> it's like, 
Aretz was having such tainas on the Rebbe Shalom that Shemayim came first. Rebbe Shalom had to make it up to the Aretz in the exact same pasuk. Don't worry, I, you know. In a few words later, I'm going to give you first dibs. Meishan Aaron, right? It's a very interesting question. Frekte Nachlas Yaakov. Nachlas Yaakov is one of the uh, super commentaries on Rashi. One of the commentaries on Rashi he asks. So let's make a cheshbon. Day one, fifty-fifty. Day two, the Shemayim. Day three, the Aretz. Day four, the Shemayim. Day five, the Aretz. Day six, half and half. Frek the Nachas Yaakov, what about Shabbos? Hashem created Shabbos. Who, who is Shabbos for? Shabbos is for us, right? You go home, you eat challah, you eat cholent, and you go to sleep. So Shabbos is for Adam. So Nachamol, yesh kinah b'masa b'reishas. So Nachas Yaakov says, he's one of the classic commentators in Rashi. Yeah, but we, we just said, Adam is min ha-shamayim u min ha-aretz. So you're right, Shabbos is for Adam. But that's not for Aretz. Adam already is min ha-shamayim. It's half and half. So it's not like we're favoring the Aretz. We're favoring Shabbos. So the Maskal David said, B'chalal, it's not a kasha. He doesn't understand why the Nachas Yaakov has to say that. He says, very pashat. Why is Shabbos more for the Aretz than for the, than for the Shamayim? Adarabba, he says, if anything, the Iker Menucha Shabbos is for the El Yoinim. Why? Because in Shamayim, all the Neshamas on Shabbos, they go up from one Madrega to the next Madrega. Your Shabbos is called the Day of the Soul. Even the Rishoyim, even the Rishoyim have Menucha on Shabbos. Can you imagine? Even people that talk by Chazoros Hashats, on Shabbos they have Menucha. It's amazing. Imagine? The rest of the week, you know, it's not that comfortable. But on Shabbos, so Shabbos in Shamayim is a, is in, Shabbos is a, Be'ikr B'Shamayim. Right, there's a Shabbos in Shamayim, it's a, all the Nagunim from Shabbos in Shamayim. Bechlal, what's Olam Haba? Olam Haba is Yoim, Shekulay, Shabbos. So Shabbos is not only for the Tachtoinim, Shabbos is for the Yoim as well. And therefore we have Equilibrium, we have shalom, we have uh, shavius, we have equality between the heaven and the earth. Another interesting question. So if I were to ask you, last yesterday was Simchas Torah, and for many people, the Ikra Avoida on Simchas Torah is not the dancing, is not even the Kriya Satoira, it's eating at the Kiddush. Many people make a big Avoida out of eating at the Kiddush. And in this shul, we were zoicha to have four types of herring. Can you imagine? Four types of herring. It's amazing. And the question is, why are you allowed to eat herring? Why are you allowed to eat fish? Are fish kosher? I'm not talking about those who say there are bugs in the herring. That's a different issue. Are you allowed to eat fish? Where in the Torah does it say you're allowed to eat fish? I'll tell you a little story. There's a man named Adam. God let Adam eat pears, peaches, Brussels sprouts, alfalfa beans, red peppers, green peppers. He wasn't allowed to eat anything else. He was a vegetarian. Yeah? And then nobody was allowed to eat meat until Noyach came out of the Teva. And Noyach comes out of the Teva and the Yibam says, Noyach, you're a really swell guy and I'm going to give you a matana Teva. From now on you can eat meat. So Ramban wants to know why you're allowed to eat meat. You weren't allowed to eat meat until now. The Ramban explains because even a behemah, and maybe this would answer the question, maybe somebody would suggest, even a behemah has some nefesh to it. Ki hadam hu nefesh. That's why even today when we eat meat, when we eat meat, we shecht it. And when you shecht it, most of the blood comes out. And whatever blood is remaining, we salt it out. We even today, we try not to get into, we try not to consume the nefesh of the behemah, the Ramban says. So why was Noyach allowed to eat meat? Says Ramban, because Noyach was Matriach, and he put in hard work to save the animals, and he fed the animals around the clock. Noach was a great zookeeper. Noach, uh, you know, around the clock, he's feeding the behemoths. And since he was Matriach to save the behemoths, and the behemoths only survived in his merit, therefore God says, I'm going to let you eat meat. But the question is, but there were no fish on the teva. So if there are no fish on the teva, why is Noach allowed to eat fish? Why are we allowed to eat fish? Says the Avnei Nezer Taka, you're not allowed to eat fish. 
You're not allowed to. It's also. Ah, but once the Torah was given, you're allowed to eat fish. Says the Avnei Nezer. Until the Torah was given, you could only eat meat, not fish. Those were the days, you know. Meat and no fish. Can you imagine? They try to give you a supper one night. Fish. No, we only eat meat. But then the Torah was given. It says Avnei Nezer. The Torah was given on what day of the week? Hakomoidim de. B'Shabbos, no Torah. That's why we eat gefilte fish on Shabbos, says Avnei Nezer. That's why we eat fish on Shabbos. Because fish only became mutter on Shabbos of Kabbalah Satayra. That's Avnei Nezer. But that's very difficult to say that we, we weren't allowed to eat fish until the Torah was given. You're telling me you could eat a piece of steak and you can't eat a salmon? Says the, the Meshachachma is bothered by this cash. Look at number 15. The Meshachachma wants to know, Noyach cared for them and he bothered for them and he prepared for them. I the fish, Vahadogim. No, he was allowed to eat fish. He had to be able to eat fish. Why? Otherwise it would be Kinabimasabarashis. The whole shear. Otherwise, not fair. The fish would be swimming around and saying, eh, God loves us more than you. God doesn't like you cows. God doesn't like you sheep. God doesn't like you behemoths. He only likes us. And it's going to create an, um, a lack of balance in creation. Says the Meshachachma, the Svara of Matil Kinna B'masa Bereshis is the heter of why Noyach was allowed to eat fish. In other words, the Riban Shalom comes to Noyach and he says, Noyach, I'm giving you a matana, I'm giving you steak. So Noyach goes home and he tells his wife, even though God didn't tell me we could eat tuna fish, it must be we could eat tuna fish. Why? Because otherwise it would be jealousy by mass What about non-kosher animals? Nech was allowed to eat non-kosher animals. When the sons of Yaakov fishermen, right? The sons of Yaakov are fishermen. Yeah. We had a shear whether you're allowed to go fishing. Ayin Sham. Okay? So here again we see the, the carefulness that the Yavon Shem had If you say We silence the person. The Yavon Shem was careful to create Adam. He told the Malachim, I have to create Adam, but the Yavon Shem knew the Malachim would be jealous, so he had to placate the Malachim, but he placated them by explaining to them that we have to create man, because otherwise the lower worlds are going to be jealous of the upper worlds. And the Yavon Shem had to make man out of Shamayim va'aretz, otherwise the days would be jealous of each other, and we have to be able to eat fish because otherwise there's going to be too much jealousy in creation. But we know there were a few little episodes when this jealousy sort of broke through, and the Rav Hashem created a big sun and a big moon. Right? Vayivro lekim, vayasa lekim, look at number 16, ashnei hama'oyres hagadoilim, as hama'or ha'gadom shalas hayam, as hama'or ha'katan lemem shalas halayla. So there's a stero here. At first they're both big, and then one's big and one's small. So we all know what Rashi says. The moon came along and the moon said, there's no such thing as assistance. There's no rabbi and assistant rabbi. There are no two parties. We can't have two kings over here. It doesn't work. Ein shnei molochem eshtam shem bekeser echad. So what did God do? God made the moon small. So you see, it's like all of creation is like bursting with kina. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like you have an, a substance that's so ga- gaseous that if you throw a little fire into it, it explodes. It's like the bria is bursting with kina. That the moment there's something over here that one creation feels someone's competing with him, there's a, like a, an, an atomic bomb. So what do we, now, now listen to what happens. So Yibam Hashem said, no problem. If they can't have two kings, then there's going to be a sun and there's going to be a little moon. But even so, the Hashem was so sensitive to the moon. He felt bad for the moon that the moon is going to be, feel like second class citizen. So the Yibam Hashem made what? Stars. Now let's think for a moment. The Yibam Hashem made a lot of stars to make the moon feel better. You know, you know that there are more stars than grains of sand in all the beaches in the world and all the... There are billions and trillions and gazillions of stars. The star is bigger than the sun. So Yibam Shem made more stars than there are dust particles on planet Earth. Why? So there won't be jealousy in creation. <laughs> Yibam Shem made things 
billions of things more powerful than the sun so that there won't be jealousy. So how far do, does a person have to go when they make a simcha or something happens to them not to arouse someone else's jealousy? Look what the Yibbam Shalom did not to arouse the jealousy of the moon. He created billions of suns to make the moon feel better. And then the Nachash comes to Chava, and the Nachash tells Chava, look, uh, Chava, you need to eat the fruit. You know why? Because God doesn't want anyone to eat the fruit. Because God ate the fruit, and that's how He created the world. And there's a concept that every profession hates people in that profession. So if you're a doctor, says Chasal, you hate every other doctor. And if you're a lawyer, you hate every other lawyer. And if you're a rabbi, you hate every other rabbi. So the Gemara says, by nature. And if you sell jewelry, you hate every jeweler in the world. Unless you work on yourself. It's a chazaka. It's a chazaka. Kol uman soine es b'nei umnasai. Because they're competing with it. It's chazaka. Unless a person works on their midais, they will hate every single person in that profession. So God hates all people who eat from the Eitz Hadas. So he told you not to eat from it. Because God is jealous. And they believed him. Why did they believe him? Because they understood that the, that the reality of the world is people are bursting with kinah. So they figured he must be right. I, he looked at the moon, he saw the nuclear explosion that happened when the moon was jealous of the sun. They saw how man was created, how carefully everything has to be balanced, and they understood that maybe Taka, the Rebbe Shalom, is jealous of them. Chas v'shalom. And why did Cain kill Hevel? Because Hevel brought a carbon, and God liked it better. So Cain said, I don't like you. So he, he killed him. So it's an amazing thing. Kina is moitzi adam mina Jealousy takes a person out of the world. You know why jealousy takes a person out of the world? Because the Rebbe Nishlam created, created the world that part of the fabric is that he was super sensitive to create the world based on the principle that there cannot be any jealousy. That's why the Rebbe Nishlam made man so that there's no bigger entities in the higher worlds than the lower worlds. And that's why God made man out of the earth and the heaven so that Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six would be balanced. Meaning the bedrock of the world is built on avoiding jealousy. So when a person is jealous, they need to leave the world. They can't be here. Because the whole world was built on the sensitivity that the Rebbe Shem had that there shouldn't be jealousy. So kina is literally moitzi as adam out of the world. So we learn from here two very simple things. And that is, if the Rebbe Nisham was so careful, think about what the Rebbe Nisham had to do so that the moon shouldn't be jealous of the sun. He had to make gazillions of orbs bigger than the sun so that the moon doesn't, is not jealous of the sun. So the Gemara tells us that a person should not differentiate between his children. You know, you can't play favoritisms. Rev. Shanshin Hirsch says, Woe to the parent that his children know who his favorite is. <laughs> That's not so easy. You have different kids. Well, well, one kid is like a gift from heaven. You don't even know where he came from. You know, one kid is, is like um, perfect. Is just what you imagine. And one kid... Not, not quite, yeah? Not quite. So how do you naturally, how do you, how do you uh, overcome? How do you overcome the natural tendency to show favoritism to one? But we see mahu af'ata, that part of one of the yesoidas with which Rebbe Shem created the world, that there has to be a certain equality. Otherwise, you're matel kina b'masa barashas. And we see Yaakov Avinu was... I'm in, in, in such control over his emotions and his, and his behavior. You know, they say that uh, the altar of Slabodka, 
he was told on Yom Tif that um, he had lost a child. So he, he, the Alt of Sabarka was such a master of the subconscious. He did not want to let out even a cry. He didn't even want to let out, show any emotion. At one point of time, he almost gave a little krechts and he controlled himself. And the moment that the Yom Tif was over, it's like he turned on a faucet and the tears burst forth. So here's a person in utter and total control over his emotions. And certainly Yaakov Avinu control, was able to control himself more than the altar of Sabarka. And yet, Chazal, in their microscopic uh, view, they were able to detect that Yaakov Avinu had a certain favoritism toward Yosef at Tzadik. And Chazal say, that is why we went down to Mitzrayim. Because when you're matil kina b'masa b'reishis, it's mitzian as ha'adam and oilam. It disrupts the entire world. So the first thing is, a person should go to great lengths and exert great energy to avoid incurring other people's jealousy. But we learn from here something uh, remarkable in the complete opposite direction. And I saw in the Sefer Limude Nisan of Rav Nisan Alpert that, and I believe this is what he's saying, if in every step of creation, what, what do we see about the Rebbe Hashem? The Rebbe Hashem is saying, we have to create man, otherwise the heaven is going to be jealous of the earth. Uh, the, the earth is going to be jealous of the heaven. What, what's going to be jealous of the heaven if there's no man? The rocks? The sticks? The grass? Yeah, apparently that the way the Rebbe Hashem created the world, the world is a very jealous world. Not just human beings, it's part of creation. And the Rebbe Hashem had to create man, part min ha'adama, part min ha'shamayim, because otherwise the days would be imbalanced. What we learn from here is, the Rebbe Hashem programmed that kina is one of the dominant features of creation. So I want to share with you a pasuk. The Pasuk in Kohelas. The Pasuk in Kohelas says, listen to this. You read the Pasuk, you think it's a criticism, it's a praise. Look at number 24. I see all the toil. And all the good actions. Shlomo HaMelech is saying, Every single thing that a human being does is out of jealousy. Kol Amal! Kol Kishrei Namase! Every dollar you make is because you're jealous of one guy who you think you're competing with and you feel, I need to make that extra buck. Every day you go to work, every Shemayna Esrei you daven, every mitzvah you ever did, it's because you're jealous of somebody. I'm not, this is not what I'm saying. This is what Shlomo says. Kol Amal! Kol Kishre Namase! You know what Shlomo says? Gam ze hevo rus ruach! It's a bunch of rubbish, you human beings. All your actions are empty. Kol Adam Koizev! You're all phonies. We're all phonies. That's what we say in Halal. Hey, people, people are shuckling besimcha. Kol Adam Koizev! You just said, what, what did you just say? I'm the biggest hypocrite in the world. I'm, I'm happy that gives you simcha. Shloim HaMelech is saying, I never saw anybody ever do anything that was not motivated by jealousy. And it's a bunch of uh, rubbish. Gam Zehevel, Rus Ruach. Says Targum Yonas HaMen Uziel, No, it's a good thing! Listen to Targum Yonas HaMen Uziel. Vachazei Sana Yas Kal Torcha. I see all the toil. V'yas Kal Oitavos and all the good things that people do. All the good things that people do is because they're jealous. If you see somebody, you know, he's involved in this organization, you see somebody, he does Hatzalah, he does Chai Lifeline, he does Taim Chai Shabbos, he does, you name it, it's because he's jealous of somebody. You see somebody, his name is on the building, his name is on the shul, his name is here, his name is there, because he's jealous of a guy, and he gave a little bit more than the other guy. So it's a motivation? Yeah. Every, not, not a motivation. It is the only motive, the only reason people do anything, says Shlomo. Now, 
listen to this. He kinasa dekani gavar lechavre lemevet kavase. It's because you're jealous of someone. You want to do like them. Demekani lemevet tove kavase. Memra deshmaya yoytivle. Gavaldik, Atta boy, keep it up. Rebbeinu Shem will reward you. You came to shul early because you wanted to come a minute before your friend. Gavaldik, do it again. You learned. You learned. You came to a shir because you wanted to. You wanted to show that you know. Amazing. Great. You'll be rewarded. But then there are people who are jealous of the wicked and they want to do bad things like the bad guys. No. this um, but levish, if you're jealous of the bad, kivishte, to do like they're bad, yavishle, God will punish you. This is Hevel Rus Ruach. Shomamelch is not saying Hevel Rus Ruach on Kishrei Namasa. <coughs> Says of Nissan Alpert, what we learned from this concept where the Rebbe Hashem is so sensitive not to be matel kinah by Maestro Baratius, is kinah is a very strong force in this world. The Rebbe Hashem programmed kinah into this world. The Rebbe Hashem wants people to be bursting with jealousy. The only thing is you have to know what to use it for because it's also a very big d- danger. It's gesher tsar ma'oid. It's gesher tsar ma'oid. The Rebbe Hashem programmed us with a dangerous tool that could be the greatest motivation to accomplish and also the, something which is Moitzianus Adam and Oilam. So on the one hand, the Rav Hashem is very careful. Everything has to be equal. But on the other hand, the fact that the Rav Hashem is showing us how strong jealousy is, He's instructing us. Listen to this. This is what, how Rav Nissan Alper learns it. That if you go somewhere and you see somebody who learns better than you, Davin's better than you, does more chesed than you. You should be jealous of it and try to do it also. In fact, all the mitzvahs that people do, it's because they're jealous. That's not what I say, that's what Shomam Ach says. And it's a good thing, and you're going to be rewarded for it. The problem is when you let the jealousy hijack you. Uh, instead, of, Here you have, a, you have two guys in show. One guy, he's a big masmid. He's a big Baal Midas, he's a big Yari Shemaim, and the guy next to him, he's a big Oisher, and he's a big Baal Taiva. So who are you jealous of? Who do you want to be like? What do you want? Jealousy is very important. Jealousy is your greatest ally. But you have to make sure it doesn't become your greatest enemy. So on the one hand, Shomar Melch says, Ra'isi Aniyas kol amal ve'is kol kishrei namasa, and the targum says yoytevle. You'll be rewarded if you use your jealousy for kinasoy from tar bechachma. On the other hand, and this is the the struggle that everybody faces, is that kihi kinasish mereyehu gamze hevel or osruach. So the Rebbe Hashem should give us all siyata deshmaya to learn the limudim from Briyas HaOlam and that is firstly how careful a person has to be not to arouse the jealousy of other people regarding in Yonei Gashmias. If somebody has, keep it to yourself. You know, they, they talk about, oh, in this neighborhood, you should see the inside of the homes, but from the outside, you wouldn't know anything. That's great. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, why would somebody put that down? That's how it's supposed to be. Nobody needs to know what you do and what you have. But when it comes to Inyane Gashmia, uh, Ruchnias, one should utilize, one should hone in, one should piggyback on the human nature. And not only human nature, it's the nature of the sun and the nature of the moon and the nature of the stars and the nature of the dirt. The dirt would be jealous if they're Malachim in heaven and they're no Adam Ba'aretz. Rav Oisai, thank you so much for coming. Agut Yar, and a wonderful rest of the week. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.